How I just feel about uh, INTJs is a very, it's an age-old question, isn't it? And it's a question that is uh, of perennial interest, which I propose that we explore in this uh, in this video. A little bit of a Friday surprise. I don't usually release videos on Fridays, but I felt like releasing a full length video this time. So I think there's three categories of, uh, if you like, INFJs feeling a certain way about INTJs. There's INFJs who really like INTJs and see them as their closest cousins. That's the number one category. Number two category is INFJs who uh, feel ambivalent about INTJs um, because they consider them, again, they're close but at the same time very distant cousins. And uh, the third category, which in some ways is one of the more interesting to me because it's the one that perhaps will be the most enlightening to you, is INFJs who distrust or sometimes even uh, dislike INTJs uh, because of the bad press that fake INTJs, mistyped INTJs, have, um, you know, have, have caused for the type. Uh, I think perhaps even more so than the INFJ, the INTJ is a, is a mistyped type. A lot of people who identify as INTJ are not that type. And uh, we can easily understand why, because it's such a hyped type, you know, it's supposed to be probably the most complete type of all the 16, capable of being equally super scientific, super literary, super introverted, or like doing really well as a CEO, being a villain, being a hero in movies, they can be everything. Like, what what is the domain where INTJs can't excel? Um, so, you know, there's, for that, for that reason and others, there's a lot of mistypes going on. So to move back to the first category, well, you know, there's INFJs who just, I think in a way, have quite an accurate review of, uh, of the INTJ as their closest cousin and who have some appreciation of the emotional depth of the INTJ because uh, INTJs, except the immature ones, the younger ones, I'm not even counting here the mistyped ones, of course, um, they're usually um, types of quite deep emotional uh, involvements. Um, FI tertiary, if it's developed, you know, the combination between NI and FI is very interesting and tends to uh, produce very emotionally intelligent people, uh, people who are uh, very much emotionally reflective and sometimes even to the point of uh, emotional sacrifice. There's a lot of INTJs you will come across who uh, prefer to feel things deeply and suffer than let these things go. It's quite far from the cliche that we, you sometimes hear about. Uh, they share an eye with INFJs and they have often the same kind of take on the world and approach to it. Of course, the approach will depart at the level of FE versus T, which is the source of the, the second you know, the second reaction that INFJs will have toward INTJ, which is there's a rejection in a way and a distrust, but this doesn't happen as a result of misunderstanding. Well, there is a misunderstanding element involved. In some sense, it's like when you have a member of your family that you're close to, but they're not exactly the way you would like them to be. Like you're more likely to react strongly to them than you would be to a stranger who had that behavior. You're all the more aggrieved or you're all the more uh, ambivalent or skeptical uh, because that person is feels very close you know and i think that that, that take is uh INFJs have is almost like of intjs being the cousins that they don't want to become um, and i think that often these INFJs will be influenced by the experience of uh, intjs who've been betrayed in life because intjs contrary to popular belief can be quite open and trusting people and they can be very passionate in friendship and in romantic relationships but if they've been if if they're betrayed man you know it can it can go any number of ways including can make them extremely bitter and fixated on the negativity of the world and they can become nihilists and usually very you know in a sense powerful nihilists because it's a it's a type that really has intellectual power at its disposal a lot of the time and uh, i think it scares infjs and INFJs at the end of the day are very conscious of wanting to retain a positive relationship to their worldview. They don't do well in negativity and uh, you could argue nobody does, but you know, there's le different levels of resilience to negative worldviews and INFJs have low resilience to negative worldviews. 
I think it will quickly just veer into some form of mental illness. Um, and so they tend to steer clear of INTJs for that reason, but usually that's because the, their experience has been distorted by their encounter with one of those betrayed and very misanthropic INTJs. And that does happen, but it doesn't represent all INTJs, far from it. Now, finally, is like I said, the category of INTJs that are disliked by INFJs because INFJs don't realize how often they're really talking to ESTPs. It's, uh, you know, um, ESTP seems to be like uh, that type that <laughs> mistypes as INTJ. That sounds kind of crazy, but when you think about it, it's the SCNI axis. So you will still have the SE intensity and some sort of disregard for social uh, correctness and rules, which you can get with tertiary FE. It's possible that you know you have other types. I'm sure. I'm sure there's many other types that can mistype for INTJ, but the one that seems to be the most common is the ESTP. And when you the and, and I should say, obviously, very sort of probably in their lives marginalized and very immature and not well developed ESTPs, and they when you when you encounter an INTJ is like very edgy and. Uh, he tends to feel like you know they need to take very strong positions and be dismissive of others and of course that can really happen with real INTJs but it's so much rarer than we think and young ESTPs that are kind of valuing seriously valuing NI because you tend to value your lower functions and can have that SE edginess you know they're often going to type INTJ because it's a popular type to have and they might convince themselves they are that and the uh, the edgelord reputation of the online, young online INTJs is completely, it's a complete fabrication. It just doesn't exist. That's the reputation that's fabricated by people who are not INTJ, who list their type as INTJ. And I think there, it's not just ESTP, but ESTP will be the most common mistype in my experience. So when you encounter an INTJ like that, Dear INFJs or people of other types, always remember that uh, you might be dealing with a non-INTJs. INTJs are usually pretty slow moving, very thought thoughtful types. Yes, they can be cold, they can be emotionally reserved, but they're not edgy. It's really not that their type. NI dominant and edgy just doesn't work together. It's an impossible combination, okay? Now, just remember that I've released a book recently, The Infinite Soul, a book on the INFJ, but not only the INFJ, if you're interested in NI dominance, in general and how to be happy in a purposeful, meaningful and uh, driven and rich life. This is the focus of this book. Okay, the infinite. So all the links are below and I have a Patreon page down below that you can support me from three euros a month, three and a half dollars. Really, really, really helps. Thank you so much. See you soon.